You're listening to Snippets from the Summit with your host, Scott McKay. How's it going, gentlemen? This is Scott McKay, and you're listening to another Snippet from the Summit as part of the Mountaintop Podcast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about, well, let's just call it what it is, a really weird phenomenon that tends to happen to us as men and probably also to women. Let's get real around here. When we're out there doing online dating, meeting women on apps, uh, online dating sites, and then having those first meetings with women. I've never heard anybody else in the dating and relationship space ever talk about this before, and it needs to be said, especially given that it came up on a coaching call that I was having with a guy just yesterday. I firmly believe that there's this dirty little trick that I don't know if we play it on ourselves or it gets played on us whenever we find ourselves on a first date with a woman sitting in front of us at a coffee shop or whatever who is already there on a date with us and at least potentially interested in starting something romantic with us. I believe it's very easy in those situations for us to be really optimistic about this person we're in front of. And to think to ourselves, wow, here is a real live female human being. She's on a date with me. Hey, you know what? She's pretty attractive. She's the kind of woman I might like to see again. Here's the thing. Psychologically speaking, when someone likes us, when someone is approving us already, it sparks something inside our imagination that makes us want to approve of them and to like them in return. And this is what you've got to ask yourself anytime you find yourself on a first date with a woman you've met online and had never ever met before until you saw her for the first time face to face on an actual date with her or, you know, a first meeting, coffee date, whatever you want to call it. The situation is the same. You are there. She's there. And this is a presumptive test drive of a potential romantic relationship. Well, would you have even noticed that woman had you been out at, say, the Home Depot or at a supermarket, or even, yes, out in a club or bar on a Saturday night. Well, sometimes it's hard to really tell, isn't it? You tell yourself, hey, you know what? She's kind of attractive, but would she have even been on your radar screen if you were kind of seeing her out there in the wild, as it were, out in fields during your normal day-to-day activities? Or would she have disappeared into that anonymous sea of human beings that, you know, we would never even notice? out there in real life, as opposed to, you know, online dating life when you're sitting in front of her. It's important to resolve this inside of her imaginations, because let's say you do invite this woman out on a second date and you're getting along and you start heading towards a relationship and you're continuously saying to yourself, am I really attracted to her? Would I have actually picked her out of a crowd or am I just telling myself I'm attracted to her because well she's interesting and interested and here's what I think is the litmus test if you actually find yourself in the position of doubting whether you would have been attracted to her or not had this online dating introduction and meeting not happened guess what you probably have reason to doubt yourself okay And here's how I'm going to back that up. Imagine you're arriving at a first meeting with a woman you've never met before. And, you know, it could be online dating. It could be an app. It could be a blind date someone sets you up with. You know, you're going old school. It doesn't matter. This is a woman you've never actually seen before until you're sitting down in front of her. If she really is what you like, you're going to know immediately you've hit the jackpot. You may even feel like you have to contain yourself a little, keep your composure, and not act all needy, and make sure that you do the right things on this first date to keep her attracted. It's going to be important to you, because you already know. Okay. Now, I also believe that sometimes, as kind of a twisted little plot complication to this dirty little trick that's either played on us or we play on ourselves... Sometimes we may still end up imagining to ourselves, would I have thought she was so hot or interesting had I saw her in a position where I could cold approach her for the first time? 
Well, indeed, if she's exactly the kind of woman you are typically attracted to, if she's your type, and indeed, she happens to be the kind of woman who, in your own mind, you can reckon that most men would find attractive. She kind of fits the model of classic attractiveness. I think you're really off the hook with regard to this dirty little trick. Where the complication arises is in the simple truth that, like me and like other guys, you probably have uh, one or more types of women who you uniquely like. They simply do it for you, and perhaps they might not do it for other guys. Maybe you like women who are a little thicker, a little heavier. Uh, maybe women who are a little taller, a little shorter, uh, have a unique look about them. That kind of woman has always done it for you. They may be the kind of women who you find incredibly sexually attractive, but if you're a little insecure, you might not want to pray them around in front of your friends because you might think that's going to be embarrassing for you. Yeah, I know. This is all a lot of social baggage that we as men really need to get over. I mean, gentlemen, if you have a woman and she does it for you and she's exactly your type and your friends may disagree, I would actually argue that's probably the kind of woman you should be with long term because, hey, she does it for you and that woman is going to feel uniquely chosen by you because you uniquely like women like her. You know, a lot of guys like tall, leggy supermodels. My wife is a little spunky ex-gymnast-looking chick with short hair. Well, I love little spunky gymnast-looking chicks with short hair, so my wife indeed feels chosen, right? And that contributes to the quality of our relationship. She feels safe and secure in that. But that's exactly the kind of woman who may trigger the thought that this dirty little trick is being played on you. So what to do? What do you do when there's this gray area where, okay, here's the kind of woman in front of me for the first time who is actually my type, but am I really just kidding myself? And she kind of really isn't. And I know this sounds so psychologically weird, but every one of you guys who's done a lot of online dating is already nodding your head in agreement going, man, that's happened more times than I can count. Here is the exercise where you will find the payoff of having much greater clarity in the future on this particular topic. The next time you go to the grocery store, the next time you go out to any kind of store, go to the bank, look around you and actively notice women. And when you find one who's attractive to you, whether you approach her or not, you know, that's up to you. That's a separate podcast episode, right? Think to yourself, is this woman a little bit of a non-conventional beauty to me? Is she attractive to me in a way that uniquely does it for me? And file away the patterns of those women you are actually noticing out there. And when I say file away, I'm saying almost memorize those traits, uh, the body types, the demeanor, the personality, how a woman smiles, how she moves, how she carries herself. Start taking real actual inventory of what does it for you. That way, when you have something objective in your memory bank and you're sitting in front of a woman for the first time, you can have much greater clarity where there used to be gray area when it comes to would I have thought this woman was attractive if I met her out in field versus, you know, being in a situation where, hey, we're already on a date and the expectation is at least available to us that we'll continue this in a romantic way. Want to talk about this some more or anything else? Scott at mountaintoppodcast.com. Be good out there. As always, visit mountaintoppodcast.com for more.